in my talk, I am going to introduce a toy model of some domains of the physical reality in which the Einstein's cosmological constant lambda plays its important part. I call it toy model because I shall play with universal constants recognized in our human physics. They are the players in the proposed game. My purpose is only to indicate some new aspects connected with dark energy. Of course, the objective problems connected with dark energy cannot be resolved only by playing with constants. They must be resolved, first of all, by hard, sophisticated mathematical work and by always more precise observations and experiments. Let me introduce first the players that I will use most frequently in the lambda toy model of our observational universe. C is the limitary velocity of transfer of energy and momentum. The velocity of light is the best example of such a limitary transfer. Note that also C square, C raised to the third power, four and so on, are limitary physical quantities. For instance, minus C square is the limitary scalar gravitational potential present for instance, in the G00 component of the metrical tensor. G, Newton's gravitational mathematical coefficient introduced by Newton to connect the gravitational force F equal in G with two gravitationally interacting charges, M and M, inversely to the square of distance. M raised to the second power divided by R raised to the second power has not the dimension of force. To receive such dimension, we must multiply it with coefficient g. In the standard model of the universe, the con uh, uh, Newton's gravitational constant has some physical meaning. The inverse of it indicates the relation between the average time-dependent density of the ponderable gravitational mass in the universe and the age of the universe. According to Jerzy Sukorski, Polish astrophysicist, this relation is the fundamental relation operating in Friedman equations. Kappa is sometimes called Einstein's gravitational constant. It is a complex constant composed of Newton's gravitational constant g and the velocity of life raised to the fourth power. It is the coefficients that is a component of his general relativity equation. It has the dimension of one of an inverse force, as we will see, of the lambda 
force. Here we see the lambda force 1 divided by kappa, the inverse of kappa. As well known, in general relativity, we do not speak about gravitational force. Gravitation is considered as a result of the curvature of space-time. However, the general relativity equation that contains in itself the force in a hidden way is not complete. When we would like to apply it to the whole universe, there must be introduced into it a centrifugal pressure to avoid the gravitational collapse. This pressure consists in the acting of the lambda force, one divided by kappa, on an inverse superfluid is a surface that is just lambda. So we see that the force lambda is not a gravitational force but a lambda force. It is present in the action Lagrangian. Here it is divided by 2. Lambda cosmology constants 1,19 10 to minus 52 meter minus uh, uh, to the second power minus the value I take from the, the year 2015 it has, as it was mentioned already, the dimension of an inverse surface, the side of which is equal to the lambda length. The lambda surface, the inverse of lambda, is given by this equation the lambda length is a square root of the lambda surface and it is very long. We see here 9,68 billion light years. Also the lambda time is a long time interval. This equation show it. 9,88 billion years. When Einstein in 1970 applied his general relativity to the whole universe, he became aware that because of gravitation his universe will collapse. But he was convinced that the universe is stable. Therefore, to introduce equilibrium and stability, he introduced an anti-gravitational pressure of the vacuum. We are dealing with pressure when a force is acting on a surface. In our case, it is the lambda force acting on lambda surface. We see that this, uh, this pressure in our human scale is very weak. It is 10 to minus 10 newtons on a meter square. The lambda pressure is known since long time in relativistic cosmology, but the majority of lambda units that I try to introduce are unknown. The constant lambda energy density, 
the constant dark energy density is also well known since long time. When we multiply the lambda pressure with one, one composed of a ratio where he has lambda uh, square root of lambda and here the square root of lambda, then the lambda force will become lambda energy and lambda surface will become lambda volume. So by means of a mathematical operation, the equation of lambda pressure is transformed into the equation of lambda energy density. My purpose is to introduce the whole list of lambda units in order to show other features of dark energy. Like Boltzmann has introduced his demon and Schrödinger his cat, let me introduce the tie point observers, viewers, existing from the beginning of our universe. Each of them has his sphere of observation, his visible sphere in his small scale world and in his large scale world. The background radiation is seen in each observation sphere as their visible horizon. The radius r of each observation sphere increases with time. The horizon runs away with the velocity c. Each observation sphere is in its inside causally bounded because of the cosmic speed limit c of all interactions. <clears throat> In the expanding space of the universe, the causally bounded observation spheres can be separated. Here's the this case when the one toy observers at center at this visible uh, universe, another in his visible, uh, uh, there are, the distance is very great, but they don't touch each other. Here we have a case where the two visible worlds are uh, uh, touch each other and here some of the, uh, part of the visible um, sphere of one observer and another uh, cover each other. According to our present day knowledge, our universe is flat at least in the scale of our observational sphere and therefore we can use with great approximation to such a sphere the Euclidean equation of sphere volume. Here is the Euclidean equation. When the universe was 9,68 billion years old, and its observation radius was 9,68 billion light years long, its lambda sphere volume was equal, was presented by this lambda sphere volume equation. Note that lambda uh, uh, sphere is 4,19 uh, uh, times greater than lambda volume. When we turn back our clocks, then we can imagine 
the past. The observation spheres would be seen smaller and smaller and the toy point observers would be closer and closer to each other. But there are minimal limited distances between them if we assume at the beginning Planck area, then Planck land will be the limiting, the limiting distance. This image is now very well known. It shows us how many dark energy we have in our universe. It is 68,3%. Our ordinary matter is only 4,9% and dark matter is 26,8%. Lambda units and lambda mega quantum of action concern the mysterious and very unknown dark energy 68,3%. We do not know the composition of dark energy, but we know an important date in its history. This date had place, grosso modo, five billion years ago, when our universe was 9,68 billion years old and the radius of every observational sphere was 9,68 billion light years long. This picture shows us the evolution of our observational universe in 14 billion years. As we know, about 5 billion years ago, our universe began to accelerate its expansion. The centrifugal action of dark energy overcame the centripetal action of gravitation. 14 billion minus 5 is equal 9 billion. And we know that lambda time is 9,68 billion years. The process of rarifying of the ponderable matter the ponderable becomes rarefied more and more. When the universe began to accelerate its expansion because of the pressure of the dark energy, the distances between uh, the clusters of uh, galaxies became greater and greater and the action of gravitation slows down. Our visible sphere today, that's a repetition of the, of the picture, we see here the acceleration. This is the 14 billion years age of our universe. We are here today, our visible sphere today. The distances between the clusters of, uh, of galaxies are greater and greater. It is interesting to note that the beginning of our acceleration to the beginning of the acceleration of the uh, concentration of the ponderable matter clusters of galaxies in the universe coincides with the lambda time and with the lambda length. The radius of each observational sphere at the time was just 9,68 billion light years. Many authors talk about the birth of a new epoch-making era, the Lambda era. At that time, 
at the critical moment, the lambda energy density remained constant, but the average mass density of the ponderable matter began to slow down because of the mentioned rarefying process. So the concentrations of ponderable matter, clusters of galaxies, began to be accelerated more and more intensively because of the lambda pressure. The expansion of the ponderable matter in the universe became more and more significant. When the date 9,68 billion years passed and the radius of our observational world was long, 9,68 light years, years, then the first complete portion, quantum of dark energy, fully appeared. At that moment, lambda energy Reached, reached its full value in a lambda volume and in a lambda sphere. In lambda value, we see that it reached to 2,75, 10 to 78 giga electron volts and in the sphere to 1079 giga uh, electron volts. At the same moment the even of the first mega lambda quantum of action fully occurred. I shall return to introduce more details later let me now present the general historical data regarding the so-called natural units. In physics, we use conventional units. For instance, nowadays we use the SI system. There were physicists, Stoney, Planck, Keitel and others, that introduced units called by them natural units because they are determined by universal constants that govern in our universe. Let me say first some words about Stoney's units. In 1874, the Irish physicist Stoney, who is famous for his introduction of the term electron to describe the elementary unit of electricity and for his calculation of its value from Faraday's law of electrolysis. Introduced, uh, Stoney introduced his physical units of nature determined by C, G and E, the elementary unit of electric charge. Stoney expressed them in the framework of CGS units. The scientific community has recognized his discovery of the electron, the existence of which was proved experimentally in 1897 by Thomson. But Stoney personally was convinced that the discovery of his natural units is more important and therefore he published his paper with the title Physical Units of Nature. In the SI system of units, Stoney's units are given by these equations. We see that these units are extremely small, 10 to minus 36 meter. 
the astonished time is 10 to minus 45 seconds. Mass is equal to 10 to minus 9 kilograms. Among Stomach's units, there is also his quantum of action. It is also very, very small. 10 to minus 37. Many non physicists, for instance Eddington, Schrödinger, indicated that the ratio of Stoney's quantum of action and Planck's quantum of angular momentum, that is, is a constant h divided by 2p gives the Sommerfeld fine structure constant. At the turn of 19th and 20th century, Max Planck has not only introduced his very important constant, called by him the elementary quantum of action, but he has also at the same time introduced his natural units determined by the three universal constants C, G and his constant H. The scientific community has soon recognized the importance of Planck's constant that became the quantization parameter of the new born quantum mechanics. But as regards Planck's units, the scientific community has long time ignored them. So Planck, during 12 years, has added to all his papers his units, believing that the community will finally recognize also the importance of his units. Later, in order to avoid the mathematical collapse of the whole universe into a mathematical point, the Planck's units were introduced ad hoc into modern cosmology, especially the cosmologists, for avoid the mentioned collapse, have recognized their importance and nowadays we speak even about the Planck's era existing at the beginning of the cosmic evolution. That was done first using the units introduced by Planck himself with his constant age that is also very uh, of a very small scale, 10 to minus 34. We see here also that the time, Planck's time, is 10 to minus 43 seconds. We are able today measure times until 10 to 23. Minus 23, but here we are dealing with 10 to minus 43. Afterwards, using Planck's units, uh, the cosmologists and physicists use also this. Uh, this uh, the Planck's constant divided by 2p in such a way Planck's era at will of cosmologists became two and a half times shorter. You see here it is uh, 2 to minus 44 and using Planck's constant introduced by Planck is 10 to minus 43. Dark energy is mysterious. 
but we know much better the ordinary matter. That is the leptonic and hadronic matter. The last is composed of baryonic and mesonic matter. Let me now touch the leptonic matter in which electrons are its stable components. When we try to bring together two electrons, then the Coulombian repulsive force increases and when they arrive to the stonage distance, the two toy zero observers find themselves as so close in their small scale world, the Coulombian force increases to the maximum lit limitary stonage force. We see it here. Then stonage force has is very great and has 10 to 44 newtons. We you know the Coulomb low and when the distance is equal to the square of uh, Stonish uh, land then we see that the Stonish force increases to 10 44 Newtons. In such a case, we will deal with a great explosive, uh, a repulsive material. The activity of dark energy was at the time entirely negligible and very insignificant. To bring together two electrons at the stonage distance, we need to use energy equal to stonic energy. This transformation of equation uh, shows us that, that when the distance between uh, the two electrons is equal to the distance uh, uh, equal to the stonic distance, then the energy of uh, that we have used is equal to 1, 67, 10 to the 8 joules. The respective stonic mass is given by this equation, when we divide the stonage mass by the rest mass of an electron, we become aware how many rest masses of electron is connected, is contained in the stonage mass. It is 10 to the to 21, to the power 21. If the stonic mass decays into electrons and positrons, then we have again an explosive material. The electrons and positrons can transform into gamma photons. Perhaps at the beginning of the ordinary matter, we have to put a stonic direct leptonic era. Stonic time is shortened than Planck's times. You see here is the stonish time, 10 to minus 4. Here we have Planck's uh, time when we use the uh, elemental quantum of angular momentum. Then it is 10 to minus 44. And uh, when we use Planck's constant, then the time is 10 to minus 43. 
Perhaps the lectonic era preceded the hadronic one. Perhaps the hadronic era of quark gluon plasma was after the leptonic era. Some historical data concerning the physical quantity called action. In physical processes, we are dealing always with a transfer of momentum and of energy along certain distance and during certain time, and also with the transfer of angular momentum in rotational motion when the angle of rotation changes. At the beginning of 20th century, the quantic nature of action and angular momentum was discovered in the micro world. These quanta are interpreted sometimes as fundamental physical events because we deal in such cases with quantum transfer of energy and momentum along a certain distance and during certain time interval. The non-Polish physicist Czesław Białoszewski has often pointed out that action is the richest in meaning physical quantity because the notion of action expresses a physical dynamical process in which dynamical quantities are connected with space-time quantities. We see here, here are the uh, dynamical quantities, momentum, energy, angular momentum, force, work, impulse of force, but here are the space-time uh, quantities, part-time, angle of translation, part-time, time, part. Now I would like to present shortly the evolution of the dynamical conception of causality in classical physics. According to Newton, his force is, cons uh, is the category of cause, but the category of effect is the acceleration. So the cause is presented by force, and the effect by acceleration. Some philosophers said at the time, cessante causa, cessat effectus. When the force do not, does not longer work, then disappear the acceleration. But Descartes, he said a force can do something only when it acts a certain time. And according to Descartes, the category of cause was presented by impulse of force. Force multiplied the product of force and the used time. And the result, the effect, is the increase of momentum. The philosopher said, oh, in this case, cessante causa non cessat effectus, because when the force do not longer work, the received momentum exists. Leibniz was of the opinion that within time we have problems, because the past does not exist, or that the future did not yet exist. Therefore, it's a, he says, the category of uh, cause must be presented by work. The product of force with the uh, length, with the distance of acting, of the acting of the force. And the result is the kinetical energy. We call it now kinetic energy, 
Leibniz used another name. But according to Matt Portuguese, in reality, force can do something when it acts along certain path and during certain time. It is impossible to act on a distance and not acting of during certain time. And therefore, therefore, according to my Portuguese, in the classical physics, the category of cause is presented by the product of the acting force and the distance of it, of its acting and the time of its axis. And this is a whole definition of the cause in uh, the physics of his time. Since this is the force, since the uh, uh, force, the product of force and the path is the word, according to Mopper to we are dealing here also with an action and also so the force or the cause defined from the part of the uh, of uh, the activity of the force uh, uh, this equation show that but when we define from the part of the effect the action then we are dealing with a mass that receive acceleration around certain path and during certain time when the work is acting during certain times and body receive kinetic energy during this time and when the impulse of the force is acting during uh, along certain path the body received an uh, increase of momentum along this path. The physical quantity called action has been introduced into physics by the mention of the word Maupertuis. Maupertuis formulated also the least action principle. However, when the variational calculus has been introduced into the examination of the mentioned principle, it has been discovered that action is submitted to a larger variational principle because it is not only a minimum, but in certain cases it can be also a maximum. Therefore, it is now more correctly to call a principle of extremal action. It is often called also principle of stationary action. The principle was central in the classical physics and remained central in modern physics being applied in the theory of relativity special in general, in quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. In general relativity applied to the cosmos with Einstein's cosmological constant lambda, Lagrangian of action has the following form. We see here is the lambda force divided by 2. R is the Ricci curvature scalar. And this symbol here, the term, is describing any matter fields appearing in the theory. And here we are dealing with the uh, determinants of the metrical tensor. Planck's and Stoney's quanta of action are very small. In the SI system of units, Planck's constant is given by the following numerical value. We see here that it is 10 to minus 34. 
dostaneš, pa neš štil mor, of more small scale. It is 10 to minus 37. But the lambda quantum of action has a mega value. It is very aesthetically very beautiful. It is 1 divided by the three Einstein's constants. But we see that here is 10 to 86 joules multiplied by a second. It is a very great uh, number, like also the lambda time and lambda length is very long. In two papers, I mention them here, I presented the whole list of units determined by the three mentioned constant. I call them lambda units because they are determined also by the cosmological constant lambda. Here's the whole list. I, uh, I have underlined this lambda units. They are used since long time in uh, relativistic cosmology. The lambda mass density, the lambda pressure of physical vacuum, the lambda energy density and the force, the lambda force. Among lambda units, there is not only the mega quantum of action, but also lambda mega quantum of angular momentum. As I mentioned already, they look aesthetically very well. But have they any physical meaning in the large scale world? Does correspond to them anything in the large scale physical reality? Can we attribute a spin to all observational causally? Bounded spheres. When I introduced the lambda quantum of action into the action Lagrangian of general relativity, then it looks as follows. Here is the lambda um, quantum of action. In such a way, we can see how the action in general relativity with lambda depends in a natural way on the lambda mega quantum of action. This aspect is here explicitly shown. The proposed toy model fits with the Broglie relativistic wave mechanics that was introduced at the historical beginning of quantum mechanics. The Broglie started with the assumption that Planck's constant multiplied by frequency is equal to mc squared. Let's follow him with respect to lambda quantities. Then the energy is presented by lambda uh, <coughs> quantum of action and by lambda frequency. Here we have the correspondent to lambda energy mass. Here is the lambda energy and it is very right. 10 to 78 
giga electro volts. Then the lambda wavelength is equal to lambda length. Lambda length of a De Bruyne wave is given by this equation. And it is very long. And the lambda wave period is equal to the lambda time. 9 to uh, 9,68 billion years. Let's repeat that the lambda mass is a relativistic mass. The dark energy is a pure energy and its corresponding mass is not a rest mass. The lambda wave is observed by the toy observers in their observation spheres as spheric wave, the front of which is running away in all direction with the velocity c. Its frequency is once every nine comma sixty-eight billion years. Let's return to Mopertui's operational definitions of the physical dynamical cause considered as physical action event. Remember also that Maupertuis was the physicist who introduced action to physics. We see here the acting force, the path and the time of its acting. And let's apply them to the causality of dark energy. Its repulsive action caused by the centrifugal lambda force is in all direction of expansion with respect to each chosen type point observer in our universe. When our universe was 9,68 billion years old, in every causal bounded observational sphere, a lambda quantum of action occurred. We need still a mega quantum of centripetal action of the ponderable matter Hg. In Kittel's set of units, the quantum of action for concrete ponderable mass M is given by this equation and then the mass is given by this equation and the energy by this equation. At the critical moment when the pressure of the dark energy overcame the gravitational attraction of the ponderable matter in each of several universe, the average density of ponderable matter was according to the Friedman relation that I show at the beginning and then we can calculate the uh, quant gravitational quantum of action uh, but in the uh, mega scale and the large scale it is also very great it is greater than uh, the lambda gravitational uh, lambda uh, quantum of lambda action. At the critical moment, the first lambda mega quantum of action occurred. The density of the ponderable matter mass and energy begin to decrease. Can Hg that occurred also at the critical moment be considered as constant or is it time dependent because the density of ponderable matter slows down? The lambda quantum of action and uh, the gravitational quantum of action 
of great scale, both of them occurred for the first time at the critical moment. Are they the two constants that can become parameters of the future quantization in mega scale? I am not able to answer this question. I ask it to the scientific community. Since in each visible sphere the distribution of the ponderable matter, dark energy matter and ordinary matter, is very random and lambda stands in relation with the magic tensor uh, with its components. Therefore, we can try to introduce mega Heisenberg uncertainty relations concerning dark energy and ponderable matter. That is only my suggestion. Perhaps the unification of relativistic cosmology with quantum mechanics has to be done in the large scale, in the mega domain and not in the small scale one. I would like to indicate still that Planck, Stomach, Kittles, etc. units can be expressed, uh, can be given using the three lambda constants C, the lambda quantum of action, and lambda itself also with the greatest and uh, the very great um, gravitational action uh, quantum. For instance, Planck's units that are expressed with this situation can be expressed also in such a way. Here is the Planck's constant and here is the lambda. The lambda quantum of action. Here is also lambda. Also when we use this quantum, here is the Planck's quantum, this quantum and lambda. The same thing we have with time. But I would like to underline once again that the opposite is impossible. When we try to express uh, the lambda units with help of the constants used by Planck or Stomace, always the Planck's constants and Stomace constants uh, appear in the denominator and nominator and therefore they disappear. Uh, the maximal increase of momentum per time and the maximal power. I would like to mention here that uh, C raised to the fourth power divided by g and this uh, uh, the c raised to the fifth power divided by g that are the coefficients in general relativity and in relativistic cosmology they indicate a limitary they uh, we can consider them as limitary uh, units, limitary, uh, limitary, they have limitary values and therefore we cannot construct an accelerator in which the increase of momentum per time unit and the liberation of energy per time unit could be greater than these two um, coefficients or this the same is expressed by this uh, this uh, mathematical presentation.
gravitational lambda interactions are entirely negligible and insignificant in the micro world of the elementary particles, but they are very significant in the mega scale among celestial bodies, galaxies, and especially among the clusters of galaxies, and therefore the lambda quantum of action and uh, the mega scale uh, quantum of action and gravitation can play their part only in mega scale. Therefore, for instance, we have discovered gravitational waves when two great black holes collide. We must be aware that mathematical models of reality are not the reality but only our mental constructions that help us in our cognition of the reality. The mathematical model of the atom of hydrogen is not an atom of hydrogen, as well as the mathematical model of our universe is not the universe. All our mathematical models contain approximations and sometimes dangerous simplifications. We must control and investigate the degree of approximation and simplification. We must control if the degree of approximation and simplification are still admissible and therefore good or bad. In a good theory, the degree of approximation should be the highest possible and the degree of the bad simplification the lowest possible. Roger Penrose published a book, Fashion, Fate and Fantasy in the New Physics of the Universe. Perhaps the introduced in my talk, toy model, belongs to models created only by my human fantasy. And Einstein, if he will present here, he could get a loud laugh, laugh of it, as we see here on this picture. Thanks for your attention.